Hey yo guys, um, just want to give you a bit, a bit of an update on how my mission trip has been going so far. It has been phenomenal, I just have to say. Uh, I'm having a blast. I mean, it, it's tiresome work and challenging at times and exhausting, but man, like, I'm just, I'm just feeling it, you know? Um, been here in Tijuana now for about three weeks, and you know, my days start 6.15 a.m., wake up, um, go to mass, morning prayer, breakfast, and then Adam working by nine o'clock. And I don't get done until right about this time, around 9 p.m. each day. Um, so yeah, I just want to talk a bit about what I've done. So I have some pictures here to show you. So I, I got to go. Um, this was totally not planned. It was just the day after I got here. Um, Father Jesse told me that um, the Oblet Youth were going to the Los Angeles Religious Education Congress and it was an amazing experience, totally last minute, didn't even know what was going to happen. Somehow, I just got to enjoy that, so that was great. Um, so, I mean, that's just a picture of me at the Congress. And it was really great because, I mean, the Oblates were there. We had our um, stand there. And the best thing of it, and the biggest surprise, was that, um, I don't know if any of you guys know who Father Mike Schmitz is, but I'm, I'm a huge fan of his YouTube videos. Really great content for anybody who's just, you know, trying to grow in the faith, um, or just, um, learn, learn more about, um, just how, like, to deal with hardships in life and how the church can help with that. And so I got to meet Father Mike Schmitz. I totally bumped into him. It was great. And then I got to go to one of his talks, which was about the hidden perils of distraction. And it was great. And one of the things that I, I just started doing, actually started it today um is i decided that i want to consecrate myself to the virgin mary so i'm doing a marian consecration it's 33 day period and that's the book again also i wasn't planning it but it's just been part of what's been going on here at the mission and um yeah i've just really been growing on my spirituality don't worry i will get to the work part in a bit it's just i had the slideshow kind of ready um like this is a picture uh, I, I, I got the sweater at the Religious Education Congress because it was very inspiring. It's a quote by Pope Benedict XVI that says, Not comfort, greatness. And um, I was wearing it when I did um, I did this cool trick that, well, not, not trick, um, devotion that um, a seminary friend of mine just um, told me about. And I did the entire rosary while on my knees with my arms raised through all all of it and it was a very humbling experience by far the best prayer I've ever done um, because I, I got to share you know first of all I offered it up as penance um, you know just for my mistakes in life I've the things I've done that I regret um, and then also to share with them um, share an offer to Christ the um, the passion um, all that he had to suffer for our sins, so I got to um, offer it up to that. And then also offer it up to the Virgin Mary because, you know, she had to feel a heart go through her, um, a sword go through her heart. Um, so it was a really great experience. So tiring, and I, I wanted to quit halfway through because of the pain. I mean, you, just after the first mystery, you're keeping your arms up. It's hard, um, but it was great. And um, that's a picture of me at the Oblate Youth Center. We have this um, Transformers logo. It says Transformados by, por Cristo, Transformed by Christ. Um, and we got to meet some of the um, oblate priests that work with the um, U United Nations. Yeah, the UNs and, um, you know, they they work with um, about world issues with poverty and stuff. Um, so that's a great experience. And um, this was a picture of me working at the construction site for the, uh, the new um, rectory house for the oblates. And that was great um, until the incident. So, back story. Um, last mission trip that I came here in December, I fell off a roof while um, working on it. And um, we were working up in the mountains where the poor people in Tijuana live. And so I fell down the mountainside for about like a good 10, 10 yards. Um, no control. Hurt my left leg. And um, I broke my phone. Uh, my iPhone. So, tragedy. And then this mission trip, second day in, into it, I broke my phone again. 
And not only that, but what happened was I stepped on a nail. And it went through my Nikes. You can see it right there. So, yeah, I had to go and I had to get a tetanus shot. It was great, but... Um, yeah, that that hurt. I'm not gonna let you look at that too much because you know graphic, but um, it was great. And uh, the, the, here are just some more pictures of me at the construction site. Um, been working there a bit, and now this is where the missionary work that um, I came for. So we did build a roof. Um, these are some of the pictures. Those for a family um, for Senora Maria Teresa. It's a family of five that lives under this roof. Um, she has a hard situation because she's partly deaf. And her husband, um, you know, has some disabilities that make it hard to work. So we did a roof and she has three children. Um, one of those kids, she just recently kicked out of the house. Um, you know, just because um, he's not been very responsible um, had some children with, with another girl and didn't support them. So, um, he got kicked out of the house recently and it's, it's really impacted her. Like she's, she's very, you know, heartbroken by having to do that. Um, but so we did the roof, took us two days, um, cost $400 out of the 1260 that I fundraised. And, um, yeah, she's very grateful for it. So this was all part of my um, donation from the fundraising I did the last three months. And um, yeah, one of us fell through the roof. That did happen. Um, but it's been great. She um, she was very emotional when she talked to me and um, you know told me about all the hardships. Um, her losing her grandchildren um, from the this, this son of hers and how it's impacted her. Um, so, I, I went to her house today, um, to, you know, just get her, her story, uh, written down so that I can, um, include it in my report for the, the roof project, um, and, like, I mean, you can just see, like, my boots are dirty from the work that I've been doing, so it's been great, um, I've had, I've gotten to go hand out food to the, um, the poor, and, um, no, you know, just, um, minister the, the sick. Um, it was really great. I got to go see Senor Nicolas, um, again, and I don't know if any of you guys remember him, but from the last mission trip, um, we worked on his roof as well. He's a man who was paralyzed. Um, his family abandoned him on the streets, long story short, and, um, he just can't move half of his body and has no control over his bowel movements, um, completely paralyzed and was just stuck in bed. I had to help give him a shower. This is by far one of the hardest things I have ever done. Yeah, oh, it was, that was really humbling work that I had to do last time with him. But um, it's great. It was great seeing him again. He's um, gotten a lot better. He's regained some movement. Um, he can lift up his leg a bit, move um, one of his arms more, which before he couldn't because it was just, you know, um, the stroke left him completely paralyzed and the muscles were starting to constrict. Um, so he didn't have much movement. So it was great getting to see him again, and um, I got to go and um, talk to an old lady that, um, you know, we gave communion to anointment of the sick, which is a great experience, beautiful sacrament that I got to witness with um, Father Guillermo here at the mission. And um, her name was um, Mauricia. She's 99 years old. Um, and, I mean, she was just a lady that's been struggling with the loneliness um, and, like, we like we really just listened to her talk that's that's what we did um and a lot of the work here aside from the labor like hand labor is just um being there for these people talking to them so we i got to listen to maritia um talk about her life and um she was it was really inspiring cuz she's telling me about how she prays every day for um priests and seminarians and um future priests so it was kind of Nice to, to see just an old lady that one of the, the few things she does in her day or that, um, you know, praying for guys like me that are discerning the priesthood. Um, so it was great. And yeah, that's um, mostly it. Uh, just want to show you real quick. Um, so this is one of the most beautiful things here at the rectory house. 
there is a private chapel. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's the big guy up there. Um, I spent quite a, a while here, you know, just um, in prayer, doing my liturgy, the hours, um, reflections, the rosary, uh, my consecration right now. So it's been um, really nice. I mean, most days I get back and I'm tired um, and really just want to go to sleep. I eat and I pray and I go to bed and next day starts. So, um, yeah, that's really just it. It's um update so far. I wanted to give you guys, um, I know the video got a bit long, no, but yeah, you know, God bless.